Hi everyone, uh, my name is Martin Malloy um, and I have been working in the Web3 space for over four years now. Um, in the last couple of years, focusing on NFTs mainly and helping clients basically build for Web3 and understand where they can add some value um, to their own business and make use of the space. Uh, so today I am going to be talking about what is an NFT and how retailers um, can make use of them. Um, so what we're going to cover is um, what is an NFT? What is the market opportunity to retailers? Um, examples of some how of how some retailers have used them and how you know, how they've done that well, and also some examples of people who have done it not so well. And then based on all my experience of talking with clients and helping them get into this space, share some tips on um, on how I think that you can push forward with this. Um, so to begin with, what is an NFT? So it stands for a non-fungible token. And the simplest way to think about this is like a wedding ring. So if you compare a wedding ring to say an iPod, um, a wedding ring has unique shape, you know, it's yours, um, it's maybe got a diamond uh, or an engraving. And that very much differs from say an iPod where I'll have one you'll have one, but they'll all be the same. Um, and in Web3 world, these attributes such as shape, diamond type, and engraving would be known as metadata. And so if we look at a NFT example of this, we can look at sort of, a, so the top one there is a board ape. It's a, so as a profile picture example, that board ape has metadata of an orange background, 3D eyes, etc. And then the one below is actually an NFT that relates to a, a, a bundle of clothing that relates to a particular um, NFT collection. So that clothing has a hat size, a hoodie size, a style, and a t-shirt style. And so these are where metadata come into play when it relates to an NFT. So in that second example there, at some point I could kind of cash that NFT in and receive those goods, those physical goods as, as specified in the metadata. Um, so some basic terminology just to sort of make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, so Minting is when an NFT is first created on the blockchain. So someone buys it or is given it, and it's when it's first created. Um, a collection is a collection of NFTs relating to a particular contract. Um, a contract is where all of the specifics and um things like mint price where the it'll it'll save where the metadata lives for that and it will also be which where you have like the mint function or the transfer function in order to be able to kind of create and use this this standard um so an nft is a standard similar to like um you know a plug has a standard in a specific country or um even even things like you know just generic standards basically uh then then we have chains so uh which blockchain is it you want to actually deploy your contract on um so there's many options there ethereum polygon arbitrum um a secondary market is once you mint the nft where is it being resold so that would be a secondary market um, so that could be a marketplace, and that gen that builds up the secondary market of of your NFT collection. 
Um, royalties, these are set by the contract owner and this is the percentage of secondary sales you would receive as the creator of that NFT. So that's quite a unique aspect of NFTs um, where if I was an artist and I created a painting and I sold it to somebody for 500 euros and then they resold it five years later for 50,000 euros, I as the artist would receive none of that. Whereas when you create an NFT, because you have this kind of code is law contract, um, there are particular ways that you can set royalties going forward on an NFT so that you can make sure that as your collection becomes more popular, you'll constantly have this royalties payout. Um, and burning is the concept of erasing an NFT. So um, this is often used, if you think back to when I talked about that group of physical items for the clothing. So at some point I might want to cash in on that NFT. So I might have sold that, I might have bought that from somebody else, but you know it fits what I want. I want that sort of t-shirt, that size. Um, and at some point I could go to somewhere and the creator of that project's website and say, okay, I want to now get real items for this. So then you would pass in your NFT, they would destroy it, and then they would create you an order in their web shop to basically post you out those items. Um, and so now we're on the same page, let's talk a bit about the kind of market opportunity for NFTs. So in the last year alone, there's been nearly $11 billion traded. Um, and that's based on today's ETH price, which is currently probably a quarter of what it was two years ago. Um, and we've also seen growth of thirty mil up to 30 million monthly active users. Um, and this went from like five to 10 to 30 over the past two years. So the space has exploded in terms of popularity. And as you can see there, also across like thousands of markets, this is not um, specific to like one region or anything. This is something that has captured people's um, attention across the world. Um, so with that being said, let's have a look at some examples of some projects and some retailers who are getting involved in the sort of things they're doing. Um, so... We've got one here called RTFKT, which is pronounced Artifact. And they started out um, collaborating with lots of um, artists, um, namely um, Takeshi Murakami um, and other Web3 artists such as Ferocious. Um, and they started basically building out these um, profile pictures and augmented reality items and these kind of this concept of like digital and physical clones so by owning this nft you for example that shoe there you would know that there was a pair of shoes sitting somewhere which were reserved for that token but instead of you having to worry about logistics you could trade that nft collect that nft um, and at any point you could decide to trade that in for a physical. Um, as well as that, we've seen lots of uh, other digital metaverse clothing um, collectibles coming out as well, um, just to kind of continue this journey. And these, um, this company Artifact have been kind of pioneers in innovating a lot of these concepts. And most recently actually got purchased by Nike, who have now realized that, you know, this is a massive opportunity for them to research and play in this space. And instead of them building out their own ecosystem, they actually decided to um, purchase Artifact and um, drive the vision that they've got there. Um, and we've seen a lot of pretty cool kind of concept shoes and clothing, and uh, they've been quite committed to this. Um, the next one, which is not actually live yet, but it's meant to be coming quite soon, which is the quite famous Starbucks royalty program. Um, they have actually recently signed a contract with the blockchain Polygon. 
which has quite um quite popular uh, sorry quite high throughput meaning lots of transactions can be processed um per second uh, and for very cheap and they have basically decided to launch their new rewards program on the polygon chain which will work similarly to how people are used to the 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 collectible stamps um and the so it'll be collectible stamps as nfts instead of just like points or or how they do it at the moment um and they're also going to think about they've they've thought about a way to open this up to not only web3 native users you know people who are comfortable in the space but also um a lot of people who probably will seamlessly not realize that they are using the blockchain but basically starbucks will custody the the technicalities of that until maybe this becomes a space that more people want to custody their own um tokens so I think that'll be a really good one to keep an eye out on. Um, it's only US based to begin with, but I'll certainly be watching how this one performs. Um, other examples like Tiffany and Co. So they ended up saying to anybody who owned a CryptoPunk, which is probably one of the most early and iconic NFT projects, um, they said, if you buy one of our tokens, um then we will work with you to make to design you a Tiffany and Co pendant of your punk um which was a really nice way of them thinking about you know where they're strong and getting into the space um without committing to a larger project they kind of dipped their toes in and said you know this is something we're good at we're going to basically build this kind of one off thing and you can take advantage of it. And and I can imagine we're probably going to see some more from Tiffany down the line. Um, and another one is in the art space. So Henny is a popular um, gallery art business. And they, um, they decided to get involved in nfts and what they actually developed in my opinion was a very cool collaboration between damien hurst and henny so damien hurst was on the fence on whether nfts were going to be popular or not so what he decided to do with the help of henny was to create ten thousand original artworks in his unique style um, they then scanned all of these in and turned them into NFTs with unique metadata to do with like the spread of the dots, um, a name for each one, all that kind of stuff. And he basically said, at some point, any of you can burn your NFT and receive an original of my work, um, which relates to your NFT. And then after a certain amount of time, that was going to be closed and he would burn the remaining originals. So in the beginning, I think a lot of people um, anticipated that, you know, 90% of people would burn the NFT and redeem the original. But when it actually came to the the finale of this experiment, um, it ended up being nearly 50-50. So he basically created a gallery show where every day you could go and watch him burn certain amounts of, of these original paintings that were not claimed by the NFT holders. Um, so that was a really cool way of um, him getting involved in the space and with quite a, a, a unique take on it. And And this sort of innovation is what everyone looks for in the space. Um, so, yeah, I I enjoyed that one. Um, and last couple here, I'll speed up a wee bit. So, Time Magazine they had something called Time Pieces where you could access 
artist drops, exclusive events, and you could also get hold of their digital magazine for life, as well as some charitable donations. So that was that was quite a nice um, use case for them to get more readers, and also, um, you know, the Time magazine cover was always something quite iconic. So they were able to um, do that with some more artists in a kind of digital manner as well. And then we had Adidas also partnering with projects and creating um so they actually created ten thousand of these nfts you could trade in for tracksuits um and they're they're pushing that forward with a mix of physical goods and also metaverse clothes so these are all great use cases um that we've seen in the space there's plenty more that i could probably talk about but I don't want to bore you too much. Um, so let's talk a bit about what not to do. Um, so not every NFT project by a company has been a success. Um, I'll go through a few of those now. So one one of which was CNN. They actually launched a project where they charged users for these NFTs. They then specified a roadmap, which... Um, which would span all the way through to 2023. But then after a year of, they just decided to basically cancel the project and um, leaving many, many people with worthless NFTs that were meant to be worth a lot more. And a lot more was meant to be promised from CNN and, um, which is not not ideal, and um, so there was a lot of backlash for this approach. Um, and so, one learning here is if you're going to do something and you're going to be public about what it is that you're delivering, you need to make sure that you see that through before you commit to anything. Um, another one was Coachella. Uh, they sold 10 lifetime passes to their festival, uh, raised 1.5 million. Um, this was all done through the platform FTX, which I'm sure many of you have heard went bankrupt. Um, and so no one can get access to those NFTs. But I do believe they are trying to plan, work out how to kind of re recreate these and reassign them to users. So I'm hoping this one isn't as bad, but you know, you've got to be careful who it is that you're doing this with. Um and another one here is Dolce and Gabbana. Uh they actually raised almost seven million from selling these what they called um, DG family boxes. And they were kind of these glass NFT 3D boxes. Um, and they had this big, um, big explanation, which said, you know, this will be for events, future airdrops. Uh, and eight months have now passed and they've got no info. And that project is now trading at, well, 0.2 compared to 1.2, which they paid at. Um, so, you know, that's certainly not gone down well with holders. And moving on to some top tips. So these, if if you are looking to get involved in um, in this space, there's, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, and so I'll go through a few from my experience of um, discussing this with other other clients um and the first one is just get involved in the space and um, there's so much going on every day there's different ways that you can communicate with different communities you can see how um how things are working how much people are selling things for buying things for you know where's the volume? Why is there volume? Um, and and you can get a really good understanding of the market just by trying to sort of go through and get involved in it. Um, it's it's a fun place to be. There's so much going on. Um, but just to try and get a bit of an understanding of of it and and you know how people are 
liking certain things, disliking certain things, um, I, I highly recommend that you all look into it. Um, and then as a business, I would say that there are probably in each industry ways that you can utilize NFTs. Um, today I went through examples which included like physical goods um, or event access and that kind of stuff. But there's so much innovation being done in this space. Um, and, you know, a lot of the use cases in the future for NFTs go as far as like land deeds um, all the way through to, you know, ticketing for concerts and that sort of stuff so i would if you get an understanding of the of the um of the space and you understand the technology then there's no reason why as a company you cannot brainstorm where this technology could be useful to you um one of the big things that used to put a lot of businesses off was the fact that Ethereum and Bitcoin used to be quite, used to be really bad for, um, or sorry, Ethereum used to be really bad for the environment. But, um, and so then people would use side chains that used, that meant they didn't have to rely on miners using graphics cards that were creating a lot of, uh, you know, using up a lot of energy. Um, but now, now Ethereum, um, since they did the merge, which happened this year, that is now not the case. And now a lot of these chains are actually very green. So Ethereum is now 99.99% more green than it used to be. So um, as when I've dealt with clients in the past, they said, no, no, we needed to be on this other chain because there's no way they would be able to commit to a chain that was so energy inefficient but a lot of those hurdles are now going away um, and as well as and that's where most of the volume is on Ethereum um, but as well as that you've also now got companies like Starbucks using Polygon which is a which has got a, a lot more throughput of transactions meaning that you can process a lot more a lot quicker so a lot of these a lot of these hurdles that we used to have are now slimming down and down and down. So even if your ideas are sounding massive and a bit crazy, there's there's a lot of reason why you could potentially start developing some of these ideas knowing that many, many more advancements are coming around the corner or are already here. So... Yeah, I would say dream big on that one. And um, any use cases you have, you know, you can run it by specialists in the space. Um, we're seeing more and more large companies um, with job applications for Web3 specialists, NFT specialists, um, because they're, they're seeing what this could offer to them as a business. And, um, you know, certainly... Certainly, the reason is because this is a an amazing opportunity for companies to lead on a project and um, also probably make some money. Um, yeah, so that kind of carries on into this tip, which is just embrace the technology. Um, yeah, talk to shareholders, try and get them on board sooner rather than later, at least to start doing a bit of research in the space. Um, when this when NFTs first kind of hit the headlines for their ridiculous sales prices for the art and that sort of thing, that was that was years ago. We've we've almost been through two or three cycles since then, and we've seen more and more companies getting on board since then. Um, and the stats aren't don't really lie in that sense. Um, so yeah, I would I would certainly not sleep on it because it's looking like it's here to stay and it will continue to grow um, and then if you do decide to launch a project my biggest tip would be 
to show transparency and commitment. Um, so if you're going to do this, you have to be very upfront with um, the specifics of the project and make sure that you have good communication and dedication to whatever it was that you promised to deliver. Um, so yeah, those are my kind of top tips um, and a bit of insight into what has been done before, uh, a bit of background on NFTs in general and the market. And um, yeah, thank you for listening. And if you want to reach out or you have any questions, then there's some ways to reach me. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. <music>